One of the things I find really interesting about conservative media, conservative people, like actually meeting them and getting to talk to them one-on-one -on -one in private, and conservatives that are at Trump rallies that are reacting to certain things that they say, is the way that they have a disdain for the network CNN. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, obviously they have disdain for CNN. CNN is on the left, conservatives are on the right, therefore it makes a lot of sense that people would dislike CNN. However, the disdain for CNN is not solely due to the fact that they're on the left, and the reason that this is obvious is because a more outwardly left-leaning network, MSNBC, does not draw this same level of ire from conservatives. It's just not the case that they're hated as much as CNN. You almost never hear people on the right complaining about MSNBC. Now, obviously, there are exemptions to that. There are circumstances where you will hear them complain about MSNBC, but specifically, the complaint about MSNBC will be about a specific host that said a specific thing at a specific time, unlike CNN overall in the majority of their coverage. Now, the reason that MSNBC does not draw nearly the same ire as a CNN is because unlike CNN, MSNBC does not hide the ball. They do not pretend to be anything other than a left-wing progressive network. Their late-night hosts are deliberately designed to be a counterbalance to late-night Fox News hosts, which is obviously a more right-leaning channel. MSNBC hired Al Sharpton full-time to do a show after he said he would not criticize Barack Obama for the rest of his time in office. Now, to be clear, the only thing unique about Al Sharpton's outward proclamation of support for Barack Obama is that he said it out loud, because the majority of people at CNN believe the exact same things as the majority of people at MSNBC. And you know this for more than a few reasons. One, they say the same things or they promote the same narratives on their network. And now that Trump is president, there's almost no distinction between the two channels' coverage. And two, it's just logical considering how much turnover there is between the networks. All these cable networks have a bunch of people moving in and out of them all the time, and when you're going from one giant New York cable network and looking for another job at another network, there's only so many options that you can actually get. So it just makes perfect sense that the editorial boards at these organizations would be identical because not just the people in front of the camera, but the people behind the camera transition between the networks all the time. Which brings us to the faux moderate today that I'm going to be talking about, and that's Philip DeFranco. Now, to be clear, I don't care that Philip DeFranco disagrees with me on politics. I don't care that he disagrees with the right wing on politics or anything of the sort. The point of this video is for me to talk about Philip DeFranco outwardly moving to the left while pretending to be a faux moderate because his entire shtick on his show was that he didn't have an opinion, he wanted to know your thoughts because the Philip DeFranco show is a conversation. It's not just him talking to you, even though it literally is just him talking to you. It's a conversation, so tell us your opinion down in the comments below because this is a man that used to pretend that he had no opinions despite the fact that he's always been somebody who's been on the Democratic side of political issues. Now, that doesn't cover 100% of the issues. I want to be perfectly clear. There are some positions that I think Phil DeFranco has moved on over the course of time, and that can explain some of the differences in his politics. For instance, Philip DeFranco used to be anti-censorship and deplatforming, and now he's pro-censorship and pro-deplatforming. He's calling for people who say things that he disagrees with to be banned off the platform when he used to do the exact opposite. I think that's something that he moved on. Where we start today is talking about tech companies, the election, and misinformation. Right, headed into this election, there was a ton of pressure on large social media platforms to stop the spread of misinformation, largely, and I think rightly, because of the role many of those companies had in allowing false information to spread like wildfire during the 2016 election and after. Largely, and I think rightly, YouTube is literally saying this is demonstrably false information that is undermining confidence in the election in our democracy, and that is wrong. So we, uh, we, we won't make money from it, but we will just allow it to keep being spread on our platform. Now, he can claim that he he wasn't calling for deplatforming there, and he can claim that he didn't really move on those positions. But just look at the major censorship stories over the past five years. You can tell within the first two of those five years that Philip DeFranco was on these stories. He would cover them, and based on his coverage of those stories, you could tell which direction he was leaning. But when it came to Sargon of Akkad getting banned off of Patreon, 
Philip DeFranco, despite the fact that he runs a huge portion of his business through Patreon, had no commentary whatsoever. When the whole Carlos Maza versus Steven Crowder thing was going on, Philip DeFranco gave a lukewarm I have no opinion about this when, again, in the past, even when it was people saying mean things about the other people that were under threat of being deplatformed, Philip DeFranco jumped out to defend them on the idea of freedom of speech. And I know I'm not talking about legal freedom of speech. I'm talking about cultural freedom of speech when we're talking about social media platforms. But my point being is that Philip DeFranco was not against allowing these viewpoints on the platform in the same way that he is today. Now all he does is talk about disinformation and how social media companies need to regulate and remove these things, even when the thing that he wants them to remove or regulate is not necessarily disinformation. It's just information that he disagrees with. I think that's something that Philip DeFranco has moved on. I don't think that was a position that he held back then and he was keeping under cover of darkness and just revealed to us now. However, there are key positions that Philip DeFranco was just hiding and not telling the truth about. And there are some specific data points that I'd like to highlight in order to show exactly what I mean. And the first of these data points is Philip DeFranco's reaction during the course of the 2016 presidential election to Casey Neistat calling out content creators that don't want to endorse Hillary Clinton despite the fact that they obviously behind the scenes support Hillary Clinton because they're afraid of the negative reaction of their audience. Now at the time, I thought that Casey Neistat was being a bit of a prick and he was throwing out his progressive politics and basically trying to shame people into coming out and endorsing Hillary Clinton because he hated Trump. But in reality, now looking back on it, I realized that he was calling out creators that were hiding their actual politics from the public because they were afraid of losing their audience and chief among the creators that he was calling out was Philip DeFranco. So a funny thing happened when I looked for the Philip DeFranco show episode to find the clip that I wanted to show you where he talks about Casey Neistat and he plays this faux middle ground. And that funny thing is, is the clip is gone. I can't find it on his channel, but I did find an article that had it listed or linked out and it's dead. It's a dead link. It's been privated or deleted. And I find this really interesting because Philip DeFranco keeps up old videos of himself where he was making what he would describe as racially insensitive jokes about black people. And he says he purposely leaves those up because he wants to not hide anything and talk about how much he's evolved over the years. Now, why that standard of living and learning and growing from your mistakes and leaving your mistakes up so other people can see how much you grew somehow applies to borderline racist jokes, but doesn't apply to an opinion that theoretically Philip DeFranco legitimately held in 2016? I don't know. I have my speculations that he probably didn't legitimately hold the opinions versus Casey Neistat, which is just speculation, honestly, but the video is gone. This is the exact thing that people hated about CNN. This faux neutrality, this phony, I'm above the fray and I'm above politics, and I'm going to give everybody a fair shot and a fair shake because I'm a man without any opinions, and I think all opinions are valid, even though, as a person, I obviously have my own opinions and positions. You don't cover the news without having a side. It's just not a thing. But Philip DeFranco, back in 2016, when it was way more profitable to kind of placate the Trump base because they were getting attacked so much by the mainstream media that they were looking to online outlets for information, at the time, all of a sudden was like, Casey Neistat, MSNBC, the CNN going after MSNBC, the equivalent, you're, you're too progressive, you're too partisan, and honestly, you don't understand that these are some good people over here, and a, a lot of things that you think aren't about politics are actually about politics. I'm Philip DeFranco, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. But the thing is, is that at the time, Philip DeFranco was actually mad because Casey Neistat was calling out him specifically. Because there is no way in hell that you can be like, well, these are this side, this is this side, and I'm in the middle, I'm Philip DeFranco back in 2016. And then all of a sudden, when you get to 2020, you are literally quoting verbatim Joe Biden's campaign cheesy speeches. Because Donald, the only thing I've seen disappear are people from dinner tables. Family members, loved ones, friends, coworkers. But hey, that's a story and my personal takeaway at the end of it. What manner of nonsense is that? Listen up, Donald, as if President Trump is subscribed to the Philip DeFranco show and he hit that little bell notification so he could get alerts whenever the Philip DeFranco show is going live because he cannot exist 
without Philip DeFranco's lackluster coverage of the news where he doesn't take a position on anything unless it's an issue where literally nobody's on the other side of it, like hurting children. Then all of a sudden, Philip DeFranco has a strong position. But, but whatever, let's set that aside. He literally is like looking in the camera. He's like, Donald, I want to talk about the people who are missing somebody at their dinner table. And of all the lines that you could possibly quote from Joe Biden, he quoted the absolute cheesiest, most fake, over-processed line. The, I'm going to look in the camera and talk about your families out there in America. Your families that are missing somebody from the dinner table because I'm an empathetic politician. Unlike this guy who's not empathetic, he doesn't look directly in the camera and give this pre-rehearsed speech that he's given time and time again that his consultants told him to give. I really care because I, I, I look directly in the camera and I said, I want to talk about your family to the American people. I'm not going to talk about politics at this debate because I'm Joe Biden, or in this case, I'm Philip DeFranco, and I'm a moderate, and I, I'm fair and even-minded, even though I'm clearly and obviously campaigning for one side while pretending to be fair and objective. Now, there are numerous other examples where it looks like Philip DeFranco is just plagiarizing the Democratic Party official campaign strategy, one of which is pretending that conservatives or Republicans can never tell a joke, and any time that they do tell a joke, even when it's obvious that they're joking, that they're 100% serious. A perfect example is this right here. Here's the bad part. When you, test a, when you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people, you're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. They test and they test. We got tests that people don't know what's going on. We got tests. We got another one over here. The young man's 10 years old. He's got the sniffles. He'll recover in about 15 minutes. That's a case. Add up to it. That's a case. Following this, you had a White House official saying that Trump was joking when he was talking about slowing down the testing. I will say, personally, this is my opinion here, I do not believe that it was a joke. He was just joking. Defense has been used countless times by the campaign. A number of times it then comes back that he was not joking. So the tone of that, the way it was delivered, and the fact that people reacted to it by laughing was not enough for Philip DeFranco to determine that the president was joking in that circumstance. Now, you can say it's an inappropriate joke. That's fine. That's fair criticism. But you can't say he's being serious just because the entire Democratic Party apparatus likes to pretend that every time President Trump or any conservative is obviously joking that they're 100% serious. But Philip DeFranco, supposedly objective person covering the news, does it anyway and then acts indignant about the thing that he obviously has to bend and twist and pretend is not a joke in order to be indignant about it. Absolutely ridiculous, but again... Democratic strategist Philip DeFranco right there front and center for you. Want another example? I got one, but this is an example of something that was not covered, which might be a little bit more hard for you guys to wrap your brain around. And that's the rioting. We've had hundreds of riots in this nation since late May. We've had untold acts of left-wing violence, terror, looting across this country, and almost none of it made the Philip DeFranco show. And what did make the Philip DeFranco show was how all these people were protesting in solidarity. Because according to Philip DeFranco, the most important takeaway from all this was this. The only thing I can try to do to, to leave things on the, the most basic, simple note is say Black Lives Matter. Yes, there is much, 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 much more to talk about, but just the general starting point, Black Lives Matter. There needs to be that general starting point and understanding, and for those that maybe initially respond, all lives matter. Yes, they should. That's what people are saying when they're saying black lives matter. Now, what was even worse than Philip DeFranco just not covering the bulk of the riots, which was the largest story in this country since late May of this year, is that when he did cover the riots, he covered them as mostly peaceful protests and minimized, dismissed, or outright pretended that the violence did not exist. And what's even worse about that is while at the same time Philip DeFranco was praising these masses of crowds during a pandemic, every single opportunity that he possibly had to condemn conservatives for gathering peacefully, like literally peacefully, not mostly peacefully, but actually peacefully for legitimate First Amendment protected political activity, all of a sudden Philip DeFranco was playing the game that the mainstream media was playing where the pandemic exists unless you're promoting politics that I agree with. In that case, it doesn't exist or the pandemic is super woke and thus it's on our side. 
I'm not sorry to break it to you, Philip DeFranco, but you can't have it both ways. You can't indignantly open your show by ripping off your mask like it's this intense moment, like you're trying to lecture all of us about how we need to wear the mask, even though the majority of people are wearing the mask and it doesn't appear to be doing anything to mitigate the huge spikes of the virus in this country, but that's neither here nor there, that's a conversation for another time. And pretend that all this mass gathering, all this looting and rioting and terror that's going on in the street is somehow okay because it follows your progressive politics. You're not an objective news person. Just accept it and honestly embrace it. Become the MSNBC of the internet. Become yet another host in the TYT network. We're all waiting for you to fully take off the actual mask, DeFranco. And that's where I really want to leave this, because contrary to the dumb commenters who will be like, you're trying to change Philip DeFranco, or you're trying to push him back into the section of being a moderate, that's not my intent. My intent is to highlight that this person has chosen a side. And the reason I'm highlighting that he's chosen a side is because, in reality, once Joe Biden is actually sworn in, as is likely to happen on January of next year, Philip DeFranco will likely try to move back into the moderate camp, but you can't move back into the moderate camp. You've come out as a pundit. You have your own political opinions, and you've taken a side. You've been campaigning for Democrats during the course of the last couple of years of the Trump administration, so you need to own the fact that you're a Democratic Party pundit. You see, what a lot of these people are going to learn is that they can't put that genie back in the bottle. And they definitely will want to, because the base that they're catering to, the people who absolutely hate Trump, are not a long-term support base for any type of creator or media outlet. They are temporary because Trump is always and was always going to be a temporary figure. Once he's gone, the bulk of these people will go back to being disengaged from politics. So you're going to see a lot of these people who have moved far left in order to get the evil bad orange man try to work their way back to the center. And it's important that you remember that they moved left when their politics needed to be exposed in their mind and that when they move back to the center, they're just putting the mask back on, but they still believe all the things that they believe and they still have the same disdain for you for believing the things that you believe. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. As I've always said, and by always said, I mean absolutely never said, this isn't just a show, it's a conversation. I wanna know what you guys have to think. Put it in the comments below. Make sure you like the video, share it, subscribe, ring the bell notifications, and support me on Patreon and all the other things. Blah, 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 blah. Till next time.